Okay. Um, this paper is called You've Got the Moves, We've Got the Motion, and it's a piece on understanding and designing for camera motion control. I'd like to present this work on behalf of my collaborators, Patrick Mörwald, Philipp Burgdorf, Elisabeth Dressler, and Andreas Butz, again from the University of Munich, LMU. And also here, I first like to introduce the background a bit. So in contrast to the preceding work, which um, was centered around camera control and virtual environment, and this work we focused more on the physical level or the physical aspects of camera control. And I think it's a niche that not everybody in the HCI community uh, might know how the tools look like, even as especially state-of-the-art tools. So I, I'd like to show you some examples how tools like this could look like. And on the top left, you see a motorized camera slider, for instance. You could also use camera cranes that allow to uh, that support the user um, uh, for a framing task, for instance. You could have so-called gimbals that physically stabilize the camera and would provide more smooth motion. Uh, drones we have seen already in the previous talk and content-based control techniques that further support the user. You can also use industrial robots that allow to set high-speed um, high shots in motion. And you can also combine modern tools like industrial robots together with traditional tools such as camera dollies. Okay, um, what we found and what we find is when we look at the, at the market, etc., from an academic perspective, uh, it's hard to prototype because the tools are expensive on the one side and they do often not allow um, to connect any new user interface or prototype to simply be connected. So if you want to test out something in the field, for instance, um, it, it's, it's hard. When we look at the related work from the scientific perspective, there has a lot of been done. And I want to quickly introduce somehow some examples that I find quite interesting. So first of all, there is Tonya Zini's work and famous Starfire prototype where they already introduced a tablet-based user interface for, camera, for control of a camera crane. The idea of using a tablet is reflected uh, in the work of Lino and colleagues who control a virtual camera, but they allow to set the user certain constraints for this over-the-shoulder shot, for instance. And what you can set up ahead is the size of the actors in the, remain in the resulting shot. And the system would only provide camera positions that would fulfill those constraints. Regarding physical camera control, Huland and colleagues provide a system for automated lecture recording that would integrate um, a cinematographic framing technique called the rule of thirds into the tracking. But if, as you can see, the, the motion is oftentimes perceived as robotic um, when it's all simply followed by such rules and incorporating human operation together with automated assistance is something that has also been proposed uh, for um, yeah, as by Stanshu and colleagues who basically laid out the, the fundamental works for such a camera crane system. So um, what we contribute um, from a perspective of, of academica, uh, academia is um, a system that would allow you to do some field research and it's easy and cheap to build, and on the other side also allow, uh, provides an open connection, um, so we can basically hook up any system that, is, uh, that, that involves a Bluetooth component. So we built the system based on low-cost hardware. We did some 3D parts and printed them out um, with open SCAD. The system is based on Arduino with open source framework. We have a Bluetooth shield involved, and all the source files that we compiled over the time we shared via the GitLab, and the GitLab link is provided in the paper if you're interested, and will also be shared at the end of this talk in a form of a QR code. So uh, also to inform the design uh, for the system, we uh, at the beginning started out with, with an sur online survey on user roles, and for the procedure, please also see the paper, um, taking ahead the results. We, want, we, we decided after the survey that we want to focus on a solo operator as, as a user role, because when they're in the field and are alone and not with a camera crew, I think they might benefit most from the automation that's provided by such a system. And in building the system, we first um, derived some requirements from an expert interview with a cinematographer who's also a consultant to manufacturers. And we derived seven hardware requirements and seven user interface requirements and from then on started building the system to provide uh, high quality for the system. We also interviewed a mechanical engineer who would uh, look over our um, first sketches and would uh, give us feedback uh, how to provide a system that would uh, provide smooth camera motion in the end. 
So most of the requirements that we found could be tested already while developing in the lab, but some aspects like uh, stability on, on set and smoothness of camera motion for this acceptable by professionals was something we had to test out in the field and we contacted several, uh, well, a pair, uh, well, two cinematographers and took our system uh, for a commercial shooting within an exhibit, uh, exhibition of a uh, museum of modern art. And here we have the first iteration of our system which is uh, 1.5 meters long. We have now an iterated version which is even longer, so it's four meters, so we can set up even longer shots. And here are some examples of the shots that we got from uh, five shootings. And the material appeared in uh, exhibition movies from that Museum of Modern Art. And it set quite a high standard regarding the media representation. And as they used mat uh, the, our material, we kind of take as a social endorsement or as empirical indication that we could provide at least an acceptable um, quality um, for professional use. And with us, we would argue that um, our system at least enables to do field research and it does not bias any results due to different user interfaces due to poor quality, because that might happen. What we also found while we were in the shootings and in prior work regard where we took interviews with experts is that there's also hesitancy towards introducing automation uh, in a creative domain or with cre creative tools. Um, we wanted to know more about um, the differences, what happens if we introduce automation. So does the quality maybe degrade as feared by some experts? And therefore we set up a controlled user study. We invited 18 participants um, to our lab. We had three conditions, the first one being fully manually, so there was no motorization or no automation involved. We again tested, uh, the, we provided the software joystick as a user interface condition. It's a quite common status quo uh, design that's, that's widely spread. And we also tested a user interface that would also take on the idea of minimizing user interface elements based on a tablet and would use the whole tablet screen as an input area and would even more radically provide nearly no user interface elements at all because also we wanted to here to provide an interface that would maximize the screen space for the, uh, the, the camera screen. We asked the participants uh, to frame a person that was moving in front of the system with the rule of thirds that you have already seen um, in the work of Hulens and colleagues. And what we measured this time was quality of control with an ad adapted version of the uh, standard deviation of lateral position uh, proposed by Wurster and colleagues. We again measured also um, the sense of control based on the scale from Dong and colleagues. So we wanted to know something objective regarding control and something subjective regarding control. And also for this um, study, we uh, measured workload based on an R satelix. So um, in this for this study, I'd like to give you some more details on the, on the apparatus. So on the top left, you see a participant in the manual condition. On the top right, you see our interface with the software joystick. On the bottom left, you see uh, our, our um, touch-based UI uh, in use. And on the bottom right, you see a part or an excerpt from our analysis tool that we use to derive um, the, the quality or the distance from the ideal position in order to derive quality of control. <coughs> when we look at the data um, regarding quality of control, um, given the user interfaces, if we sum it up, we could found no effect due to introduction of automation. We could also say it's no negative effect. However, that's up for discussion because it's hard to prove a negative at all. What we can say so far is we could not identify an obvious effect. Um, that is what we can say. Um, but of course, um, proving a negative is a hard thing at all. So we have to conduct more studies and even uh, invite different populations, etc., in order to derive uh, something that's more a that could be considered a reliable uh, conclusion. Uh, when we look at the data uh, regarding sense of control and workload, what we find is uh, that regarding perceived control, there's also no significant difference. Um, regarding workload as an overall score, uh, overall score there's also no uh, significant difference. However, in the, dom in the dimension of physical demand, there is a significant difference, and that is something you would expect and the differences between all uh, the user interfaces. And so basically, I think it's 
it's an indicator that our methodology is not completely off. So you would expect a difference in physical um, uh, demand and that's something that we also could identify, however we could not any identify any different uh, differences given, the, uh, given our study and setup. And that was kind of surprising to us because we uh, expected that there was more difference regarding quality of control or at least the sense of control. And we figured why could that be? And it could be because the degree of automation of the user interfaces was not varying enough. It could be that our measurement tools were too coarse simply to identify a difference. And it could also be that participants were not aware of uh, the quality of the results. So that would change the rating of sense of control because we figured when we looked at the results of the recordings that there was a lot of shaking going on, or shakiness, especially in the manual control condition. And smoothness was much more, it was better uh, with the remote control. But we had no review phase in the study so maybe participants are simply not aware of the quality. And therefore we set out a second study addressing uh, those issues. Uh, for this study, we invited 12 participants. Um, we again uh, tested two conditions, which was the self joystick for remote control, which uh, is a well, good baseline um, so far for this domain, I guess. We also offered uh, this time a more automated user interface, which is keyframe-based. So keyframe-based interaction is something you might know from video editing or animation software. And we um, set up this user interface in a Wizard of Oz style. So we want to wanted to quickly conduct another study on that particular idea of is a review phase um, reasonable or does it provide anything good in, for the ev evaluation methodology. And we altered the task a little bit so to be able to use this web Wizard of Austin methodology, we introduced a task where participants should, in varying uh, sequences, uh, frame certain elements that we set out um, ahead of the study. This time we again measured sense of controls, but we introduced um, more data points. So the first measurement was uh, as a baseline measurement ahead of the study. Then we had the exposure to the user interface elements. Then we took another measure measurement and then we had the exposure to the review and we took another measurement. And when we, what we measured was uh, in detail, so uh, to rate what would you prefer, more an automated or a less automated user interface. And maybe uh, once you see that while you're manually controlling, the quality of your results is not as good, maybe you change your mind and maybe we could, we could identify that. As the apparatus of the second study was quite similar to the first study, I just want to introduce briefly the, the user interface conditions. So on the top, again, you see the software joystick interface, which uh, we used already in the first study. And on the bottom, you can see a screenshot of the keyframe-based user interface that we used uh, for this study. So the interaction techniques or type or ideas behind it are quite, quite different. And when we look at the data that we gathered, um, Quite surprisingly still, um, we found that there is no, no change in preference, even um, that people are now um, exposed to the quality of shots that they, that they could shoot. And we could also um, see that the, the material or the quality of the material is not quite the same. So um, what to, to sum up here, uh, no effect due to the introduction of a review phase could be observed. Yet still, I think that's an interesting point for discussion. Uh, when we look at shootings on, on set, reviews are taken all the time if there is time. So reviewing is an, import, is an important part of the uh, production. And I think still that in review is an important part, or should be an important part in evaluating such systems. Uh, despite that we could not identify that makes a, a difference regarding our setup, but maybe also um, that's due to the population. So if we have a more expert population with test that have would have tested that to them. Maybe that would identify some more changes. So in conclusion, we ad identified several research challenges that we took on with our prototyping platform. We designed it in a user-centered way and we provided freely an open source. Um, we even took it uh, to, uh, to the field and tested it and could conclude that it's uh, at least acceptable for professional use also. We conducted two studies uh, with the first uh, at least showing there's no negative, not showing, but indicating that there's no negative effects of automation. We could not observe that, but it's hard to prove a negative. I, I get that. And the second study um, 
The idea was, okay, should we introduce a review phase in the ev evaluation methodology? We could not identify a difference, however, we would still argue that it should be an important part of the evaluation process. And with that, I'd like to conclude and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Axel. So now we do have time for questions. Then. Thank you. Um, so with the review phase, were they, do you think the fact that they weren't affected by the quality was an artifact of them knowing it was a study and that they weren't really that focused, they were more focused on the task than on the quality? Could be, could really be. Um, I think if you're on set and it's a commercial shooting, and the quality must be okay, you will also take a backup shot, for instance. And if you're in a study, um, you're just well, trying things out and then you, you rate them somehow and that's your mindset. So that could also be one variable that, that would affect the results, yes. More questions, maybe? 